Well, hi everyone, and welcome to the Identity and Access Management Quick Fix channel. Today, we will be looking at Azure Active Directory Security Token Service 50020, which is uh, an error message that is returned if a guest user from, from an identity provider tries to sign into a resource in Azure AD, preferably an application. So if we look at our agenda for today, what we will actually be looking at is uh, a clearer picture of this error message, what it looks like exactly, and an overview of it. And then we will also be diving deeper into scenarios that can trigger this error message, as well as providing you quick fixes for this error message. So let's jump straight to this error message and see what it looks like. Here we go on our screen. User account, whatever that user account is at outlook.com from identity provider. In this case, our identity provider is live.com, does not exist in tenant and cannot access the application. Azure is gonna pull out the application ID for you like you see on the screen. And I had to conceal it to a certain extent. Now Azure is also going to suggest with, uh, to you that you need to add the user as a guest user or an external user in the tenant where the application is hosted in order for the user to have access to that application. Now, if you have access to this user's own tenant or web user is hosted and you sign in there with a maybe a user admin or global admin credential, you will be able to see uh, this 90072 error code entry which indicates is sign in failure for this user that corresponds uniquely to this uh, error message here we see on our screen. Now, when you're registering your application in Azure, you are prompted to, to provide a name for your application, which you can always go back and change if need be. And you are also uh, prompted with multiple supported account types that you can use. And selecting these account type is totally up to you depending on how you want your app to function. Amongst the account type, we have a single tenant account type, which, is, which means that only users in your Azure AD tenant will have access to the application. We have multi-tenant, which means from other Azure AD directories, they can also access your app. We have multi-tenant and personal account. And then we also we have personal accounts only so this is just an overview of your app registration page you will be prompted with in Azure AD and the account stack that you can pick from. And like I said, the account, type that, the account type that you will select will be totally up to you depending on how your app functions. So let's get straight into our first uh, scenario or the first possible cause of this error message here. The first possible cause is the use of unsupported account type. Now I went ahead and I registered an application in Azure that is named CA policy app. And for the accounts type, like I showed you in the previous slide here, uh, I picked accounts in this organization, organizational directory only, which is a single tenant app. But then for the sign-in scenario, the first, the, the error message that we saw, it is like, a user from outside of my organization was trying to access this uh, application, whereas this application is set for only users in my tenant to access. So this is a possible cost that can trigger this um, 50020 error right here. Now, in order to fix this, we will have to change the uh, sign-in audience setting in the app registration manifest. Now, before we do this change, we wanna check the manifest to be sure that the sign-in audience uh, setting contains one of the following values. That is the Azure AD and personal Microsoft account, Azure AD multiple organization, multiple Microsoft, I mean, personal Microsoft account. So I went ahead and I checked this application uh, manifest. I drove down to the manifest and then I found the sign in audience and I saw that it did match the option that I chose here, my organization only. And as you can see here in the manifest, it has Azure AD, my organization. So this is a single tenant application. So in this case, 
The way around this will be for you to recreate the application and choose the appropriate um, sign in audience value here to allow other users from other organizations to access your application. Now I went ahead, I read in a, some Microsoft documentation that it says you cannot currently change the uh, sign in audience in the manifest. I had to test that out and actually I did. I was able to change the signing audience as you can see on your screen. I changed that from um, a single tenant to a multi-tenant. I was able to change it and save it without error message. But what I believe could happen in the future is that user could start having signing issues with the application after this change is done. And I highly, which is, uh, I mean, I, I, it could happen, okay? So I will highly recommend that you go ahead and do this in your test environment before pushing your application into production for your users to use. Now, there's also a warning about switching from a single tenant to a multi-tenant application. Now, uh, and this can fail at times when you're changing it due to the application ID, URI, name collisions. Now, if you look at this um, app ID, URI, we have on the screen, the first option right here is HTTPS mydomain.com slash my app. This is a typical app ID, URI right here that you can have. But, um, and this app ID URI is, is one of the ways an application is identified in protocol messages. And for a single tenant application, the app ID URI only need to be unique internally or within that tenant. But for a multi-tenant application, it has to be globally unique so that Azure AD can find the application across all the tenants that are available or that are there. Now, this uh, global uniqueness is enforced by requiring that the app ID URI host name matches one of the Azure AD tenants verified publisher domains. Take for example, I have a tenant named um, hopet.onmicrosoft.com. That means a typical app ID URI for this tenant will be HTTPS, hopet.onmicrosoft.com slash my app. And if I have a verified domain that I'm using in Azure AD, uh, the app ID URI will be HTTPS, hopet.com forward slash my app. Now, this is a screenshot of an application that I had registered named Snowflake or what client. And this is where you can come, once you're done registering your application, you can come right here and to add uh, the application ID URI. Once you click this option, you will be able to add the app account, uh, the URI. So this is just one of the scenarios that can possibly cause this uh, 50020 error message when users try to sign into an application that is an unsupported account type. So we move on to the second scenario and that is the use of wrong endpoint. Okay, when you're accessing the application, your authentication call must target a URL that matches your selection if your registered app supported account type was set to either of the following values you see on your screen here, multi-tenant, multi-tenant and personal or personal only. Now, if you're using this uh, HTTPS login.microsoftonline.com forward slash your tenant name or the tenant ID, this means that users from other organizations will not be able to access your application. You will have to add those users in as guest users into your tenant where the app is hosted in order for those users or that user to have access. Now, in this case, the app is expected to run only in your tenant. Okay, so the fix to this will be to use the uh, corresponding URL for the specific application type that we have. Uh, the application test we have on our screen, multi-tenant app, you can use the login.microsoftonline.com slash organizations, uh, multi-tenant and personal, you use slash common, and for personal accounts only, you use slash consumer. Now, these 
have to be matching. You cannot use a uh, organization slash organizations for personal, no, not, not right now. So once you've done this settings, you have to then um, also apply this URL in the authority setting in your application code itself, have it saved to enable this app run as expected. So this is just one of the uh, many scenarios that can trigger this uh, 50020 error message, the use of wrong and wrong. So we go to the third scenario that can possibly trigger this, and that is sign into wrong tenant is very possible. The user can sign into the wrong tenant than what they intentionally, than what they intended to sign into. Now, when a user tries to access your application, Either they are sent a direct link to the application or they, are, they will try to access the application from the myapps.microsoft portal. Either ways, the user will be redirected to sign into the application. Now, in, in some cases, the user might already have an active browsing session uh, that uses a different personal account than the one that the user wants to use to sign into the application or they have a session that uses their organization account, although they intend to use a personal account or vice versa, whichever way. Now to make sure that this is the scenario here, we will need to take a closer look at the user account and the identity provider in the error message, like the error message I, uh, I showed you from the beginning of the slide. So you want to review the values. You, you want to know whether these a value match the expected combination. Like uh, for instance, did a user sign in using their organization account to your tenant instead of their home tenant? Or did a user sign in into the live.com identity provider using a different personal account than the one that is already invited? You know, these are just uh, questions you want to like put around this uh, sign-in scenario. So a quick fix for this will be to have the user sign out and then sign in again from a different browser that is either a private browsing session or um, an incognito window. And that user will have to open a secure browser session and sign in with the right credential or have the user sign into a regular browsing session but before the user do that, that user will have to sign up completely out of the browsing session and then sign back in with the right credential this time. So doing this should be able to fix this um, scenario that is if the user is signed into the wrong tenant. Now, our fourth option or scenario here will be just wasn't invited in the first place. Yeah, it's possible, it's, it's very possible. The user might wanna access an application that they think maybe I was invited to this application, it happens. So perhaps the guest user trying to sign into the app uh, was not invited to the tenant in the first place. It is always good to verify, you know, that the user is a guest user in the tenant first, you know. At times the tenant at me may have sent out the information, but then, the user did not redeem the application, I mean, the invitation. So a fix to this would be that you can have the user check the email and redeem the application. This is a typical uh, invitation here we see on our screen. All you have to do, click the get started option and you will be able to redeem your invitation. And this can in turn grant the user access to the application in the Azure EB tenant. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I will be post, uh, pasting in the description below a link to um, configuring guest user in your Azure AD tenant. And I will also be posting the link to the video with the rest of the three scenarios and their solutions or quick fixes. So thank you guys for watching. And uh, you can comment in the comment section below, let me know if you had this experience before and if which of these solutions work for you. Thank you guys for watching and have yourself a beautiful day. Bye-bye.